start with that top story. And we still don't know what the Russian cargo ship, the Lady R, was loading or offloading when she docked at the naval base in Simonstown in December last year. While the U.S. ambassador, Ruben Brigitte, may have apologized for the tone of his outburst, he's not actually retracted his allegation. The South African government has since denied supplying any arms to Russia. While officially we're non-aligned on the Russia-Ukraine war, concerns have been expressed about reports emanating this afternoon that a South African military delegation is in Moscow for talks on combat readiness. The group is apparently led by Lawrence Mbata, commander of our country's ground forces. Well, I'm joined now by the Democratic Alliance's shadow defense minister, Kubis Maria. Mr. Maria, thank you so much for your time. So um, I wonder if you could just tell us what you've heard. We've seen a couple of reports on international uh, sites. Do you have confirmation that this visit is currently underway in Moscow? Yes. Uh, hello, Sally. Hello to your listeners. And your viewers, yes, um, I have seen uh, a few media uh, clips also from Russia and then very late in the afternoon, a media release from the Department of Defense. So that is a, a confirmation of uh, what we have said in our statement that the, in fact, uh, you know, the chief of the army and the delegation with him um, is in Moscow currently. A very awkward time. You know, timing couldn't have been worse. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know how the defense minister and the uh, chief of the SNDF uh, can justify this in the light of what was going on and what was happening mm. over the last, uh, especially the last week and so. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, will... it's, not, it's not good in the eyes of, the, of our uh, trading partners and investment partners. Um, but yes, that unfortunately is true. You obviously look at defence matters all the time. Is this sort of visit actually quite normal, though? <clears throat> there are um, regular visits between the South African Defence Force leaders and various um, defence forces around the world. So that's not uncommon. What is obviously uncommon and very awkward is, again, the timing. Um, I always say that when you do proper analysis of your circumstances and of the timing, um, then you need to respond and act accordingly as well. Perceptions is so important in today's life. Often perceptions, which is not necessarily the reality, but that in the eyes of the beholder, that's the truth. So if you do not manage that and do not speak to that and act to that, then you are in a losing battle, irrespective of how uh, wonderful your acts and your intentions might have been. Mm. Um, it, it, it gives the impression, it gives the impression that the president is speaking with a forked tongue when he says that they, you know they, the government is non-aligning. Um, they certainly doesn't seem to be a non a, a non-alliance to us as the official opposition, and most certainly you can't expect anybody else, especially Ukraine and the United States and the European Union, to also think that, you know, this is mm. a proof sure. of non-alliance. In fact, quite the contrary. I, I hear what you're saying, though, of course, you're also saying it is not uncommon to have such visits, but the timing and the perception no. is, is potentially very problematic. What is your understanding of, of what's yeah. being discussed? I mean, what does it mean, combat readiness? What, what exactly does that entail in terms of discussions oh. and meetings? <laughs> Obviously, you know, um, without divulging any, any secret or, or, or sensitive stuff, it is obviously the way that you cooperate with other nations. It's, it's also where you might discuss whether you will have certain exercises in the future and what the objectives with those exercises will be, what, will you, uh, what kind of prime mission equipment will you involve, and what is the objectives of each of the nations um, from, from, um, uh, from these exercises. So, so uh, you know, these things have got uh, uh, an impact on your foreign policy and it most certainly have an impact on your trade relations and investment relations. And, you know, the Defence Force and the Defence Policy must always protect and be in support of your trade relations and obviously your, your, your international mm. relations as well. 
Um, but at this stage, it doesn't seem like the Defence Force and the Minister of Defence realises the role of the Defence Force in supporting and protecting our, our economy as well and our economic future. Mm. Quite the contrary, unfortunately. So, so what, what has happened since last week, really, is that, you know, uh, Ruben Brigetti, the U.S. ambassador, made those startling allegations, basically saying, well, he did. He said he'd bet his life on it, uh, that South Africa has supplied arms uh, through that do docking of Lady R, that ship, <coughs> the cargo ship in December. Over the weekend, South African government, uh, the minister in the presidency, Kumbudzan Chabeni, coming out and denying that any form of arms have been given to Russia through this transaction. Um, do you think that that denial, um, and also perhaps the president's newsletter, where he, he sketched out this morning uh, where South Africa stands, that they are non-aligned, um, that they're a sovereign country, and that they reserve the right to have contacts with all parties. Do you think that those moves have perhaps helped uh, to quell the tensions that were looking pretty intense on Thursday night, along with, let's not forget, a Brigitte's yeah. meeting with Naledi Pandor and seeming to say, look, perhaps I got the turn wrong, but not denying or not retracting his allegations. But do you think it's calmed down a little? Um, I don't think so, uh, and especially with the news of today and, and you know, the, the, basically denials from them, it certainly cannot, cannot assist that. Um, so there's, there's no ways that that can be the case. One must, one must remember, again, um, you know, although they don't deny it, one must re remember this right of sovereignty and of deciding who you want to side with also have got obligations, not only rights, but also obligations. And you can't separate the two. Then you want your eat and cake, uh, your, your cake, eat, uh, you want your cake and eat it. So, and that, unfortunately, life doesn't work that way. If, if, you, if you look at, the, at our future, obviously we must look and see how do we survive as South Africa. And that is only through economic development, only through job creation, only through beneficiation. And remember, currently the only countries or regions we have got a surplus trade balance with is America, the Un European Union, United Kingdom and Japan and in those countries, we export beneficiate products. In other words, where you create the jobs, where you um, produce, manufacture, um, and, and, and you get added value. Uh, on the other side, we, we export a raw material, very little or no beneficiation involved. Mm. So if we are prepared to lose out on AGOA and investments and export opportunities to the United States, you know, European Union... Yeah and the UK so, will so most probably follow, and then we have got hardship and, and, uh, and really a, a, a dark future in front of us. Yeah. And that will impact on the Defence Force as well. Yes. So, uh, finally, what is the latest on what we know of Lady R? Because there's so many theories flying around. One is that actually uh, they were giving us arms, mm. um, that they were offloading arms, not actually onloading arms. Uh, some theories suggest that perhaps it, this was done without the South African government's knowledge. What do we know for sure right now? Well, what I have known since that week that the lady R docked in, in, in Simonstown was, first of all, it was very unusual. Normally, our imports of munitions, imports and exports of munitions, uh, take place through um, normal commercial ports, which which are official points of entry. A naval base is not an official point of entry. So, in other words, they have avoided to to be checked by customs and excise, national treasury, uh, South African police, uh, um, uh, home affairs, etc. All the all the, the 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 agencies that is normally an official point of entry, they they avoided them. Why did they avoid them? One wonders, hmm. because commercial air, um, craft like that and vessels do not necessarily, and, and that's very unusual, that doesn't happen that they make use of a naval base to load and offload. What we know, and the minister has for implica implication admitted to that, this is old orders, and I have traced it back to 2019 and 2020, where there were two uh, import permits um, approved, 
No, that is before the war and that is before COVID. However, um, the, 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 the delivery was basically during the war. Um, and at that stage, there was a, um, uh, a sanction on, on the vessel and, and obviously on purchases um, from, from, uh, from Russia. Um, so, so that we know. What we also know, I mean, th those I could have, I tracked and I, I uh, made my calculations and, 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 and I could correlate that, the quantities with what was in the seven containers and what was delivered to the ammunition depot. So we are also aware that our special forces, especially in Palaborba, they, they often must train with um, AK-47s and other uh, Russian and Eastern Bloc uh, ammunition because they more than often take, take many of these weapons away from insurgents, uh, whether that's in the Congo sure. or in Mozambique. Uh, and, and some of them prefer using uh, those weapons in Africa as well. I have got information that I know is very reliable, that I know um, that ammunition was in fact loaded onto the vessel. I've heard the stories of, of uh, you know, vigilante groups and, and other rogue groups. That is impossible. I cannot, as a member of parliament, as a member of the oversight committee, cannot even walk into Simonstein Naval Base. Now you want to tell me that nobody knew and was aware of not only the seven containers that was loaded, but also the, the, the equivalent of three, four to four containers that was loaded onto the vessel. So in other words, there was enormous movement and traffic in and out during the night under heavy, um, you know, spotlights and everything. So uh, there's just no ways that it is possible, even in the slightest, that they can say they were not aware of this and who was behind this. There's a few people that, that, that has got access to this information. Uh, so they don't have to have a, a judicial uh, commission. They can only phone those couple of people. Um, it's even the, the, the logistical company belonging to Arms Court that was uh, responsible for, for the, the, the logistical arrangements of the freight uh, that was unloaded and offloaded. Uh, um, right. uh, you know, so, in terms of Lady R. So, so what you're saying to me is that arms were delivered, uh, and you've tracked that, and that isn't yeah. the surprise. But you yeah. have reliable information that arms were also put on board yeah. as well. And you're saying the yes. answers can be very Although, quickly found. And I have run out of time, but I have to ask. Well, I must just yes, just clarify. I'm, I must just I must just add that I haven't tracked any export permits for ammunition to Russia. The one export permit that was issued in in 2019 to Russia was for for more technical and technical equipment um, that that is not ammunition per se, um, and I doubt that 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 will be loaded onto a vessel like this. It would rather be flown out by an aircraft. So, there, in other words, if if uh, and I've also even heard that you know this ammunition was donated. If it was donated and if it's South African uh, ammunition. That's the cost of the taxpayer. That's even worse. And they cannot be taken out, whether for free or, or whether they pay for it, without permits. What counts for the one must count for the other. So we must get to the bottom of this. And whoever has taken us for a ride and has caused this enormous um, diplomatic embarrassment and probably with economic consequences uh, must bear the brunt of this. I'm no out doubt. of time, but who would know? Who are the people? You say there's two or three people. Give me the names. Well, the Minister of Defence and the, and, and the uh, President as the Commander-in-Chief, they have got political oversight over these people. And uh, if, they, if there's a political will, uh, I've got no doubt that they will be able to know exactly who to, who to push for this. No doubt. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us uh, this evening. That is the Democratic Alliance's Shadow Defence Minister, Kubis Moray, telling us that he's tracked. Uh, it's very likely sh um, ammunitions were dropped off, but uh, he also says clearly something was loaded on to that ship in December, but there are no export permits. Lots of questions. Also raising questions this hour about a confirmed trip by the head of our ground forces here in South Africa to Moscow at this time. Not necessarily unusual, but he points out really difficult timing. Still to